In this video, I wanna show you how to create a dynamic floor plan that you can use to talk about not only the layout, but material palette and a sense of overall vibe. This project is the second floor remodel of a Victorian home in San Francisco. The goal was to create a more open, unified floor plan for a young couple and their baby. I will be using Procreate for this demonstration. The first thing I would do is to make a copy of my custom scale template that I made for myself in Procreate. If you're looking to do that, check out this video above. I will also leave a link in the description below. For this project, I will select a 24 by 36 inch template because that's what my existing PDF is based on. Then I'm going to move this copy to the outside of my template folder. Once I'm inside the canvas, go to the gallery and import in the JPEG version of this existing floor plan that we'll use as an underlay to build the proposed floor plan on top. You'll see that there are many different scale in this template folder because this floor plan is in quarter inch scale. I will just delete the rest of the scales because I won't be needing them for the drawing. Now I'm going to reduce the opacity of this background layer. So when I am tracing on top, my line work is going to read better. Additionally, I will also lock both the scale layer and the existing drawing to avoid accidentally drawing on them. It happens if I don't do this occasionally, which can be annoying to fix when you realize it. So I think it's just good practice to do it when you're setting up your drawing. Similar to drawing on trace paper, it's always good to build your drawing from a high level and gradually add details as you go. In this case, I'm tracing the walls, the windows, and the built-in casework with a single line weight first. And you can always go over the cut line with a thicker line weight later on. I am using a little trick here though. I have this drawing assist feature turned on. This essentially allows me to draw orthogonal 90 degrees lines very fast. Suppose if I need to draw in any other direction, like a 35 degree angle for the bay windows. In that case, I would just hold down my pen when I'm drawing in freehand and wait until it becomes a straight line before taking it up. Sometimes, if the length of the line is relatively short, I might just freehand it. Keep in mind, the proposed design for this floor plan has already been worked out, which I'm looking at off screen. I mean, it's actually a built project, so I'm purely illustrating this plan for the tutorial purpose. So don't think of me as this incredible designer who can get it right on the first try. If I make a mistake, like crossing a line where I shouldn't have while watching The Walking Dead on Netflix, in that case, I will be a little patient until a good amount of mistakes are made before taking the eraser and batch remove those extra bits of lines. Sometimes I might intentionally draw something that I know will be easier to erase later on, like cutting windows and doors into a straight wall. I'm not going to tell you how you should be drawing on different layers, but when I have significant amount of line work on a single layer, this is when I would decide if creating a new layer will give me an easier time to edit in the future. So for example, built-in casework, plumbing fixtures, appliances, and furniture can be drawn on a layer of their own. If you need to revise any of them later on, you won't need to redraw things that they are touching. At some point, you might want to embellish your drawing with decor and smaller household items especially for interior floor plan like this. So this could be plants on the floor, books on the table, pillows and throw on the couch, whatever that you think is appropriate. I like to think that adding a layer of this kind of information humanizes your floor plan and makes it more relatable to understand. Like someone can almost imagine themselves living there, but try not to go overboard too much with a lot of stuff as it could look messy, which has the opposite effect. Adding texture to element like the floor is also a nice touch. You can begin to suggest a material palette even when you don't have the exact materials picked out. For this project, we have a white plank with floor, which I will use straight horizontal lines to represent. And the scale grid in the background is helpful as each square is exactly one foot in length. So half a square is about the width of a plank of wood. For the bathroom, I chose to use a herringbone pattern tile in a dark navy tone. The counter material is a stone composite in a solid white, but I feel like it looks better if I give it a couple of streaks, so it looks more like a stone surface, which is just for the representation. Before I get into coloring, 
I want to do a little house cleaning in my layer structure first and group all the line work into a folder so it doesn't get out of hand later on. At this point, I imported a paper texture from my iPad gallery to later use as a background for this canvas. One drawback about drawing digitally is drawing tends to look a little like it wasn't drawn on paper. Well, of course, but this is a small hack to adding at the end of the drawing to imitate the quality of real paper. When you are ready to color, select the marker brush, which I have available for you in the download links below. I think this is the closest imitation as you will get to an actual Copic marker. Find a size that's about the width of the plank of wood first, and with drawing assist turned on, you can perform large horizontal strokes across the page. Don't worry if it bleeds into the walls or furniture, because you can just take an eraser tool and remove that extra bit of coloring afterwards. This is definitely where Procreate shines. If you make a mistake, there's usually a time um, to fix that later on. The same goes for adjusting the hue and saturation for different materials and surfaces. Sometimes I like to do it on the spot, other times I like to wait uh, at the end to make those tweaks. I will be using the same coloring techniques for other part of the drawing as well, and this is where you have to be more strategic about what color goes on what layer. As a rule of thumb, I like to separate the similar elements like floors, walls, windows, and counter on their own layer so I can individually tweak their color afterwards. But also to avoid having way too many layers um, in the future, anything that doesn't fall into the main bucket can get placed into a general catch layer like furniture layer. Towards then, I usually have a small chunk of time dedicated to refinement, such as tweaking the color and adding additional details until it's exactly how I wanted to tell the story about the design. So if I think the color of the couch or the chair is too vibrant, I can easily adjust the hue and desaturate using a hue adjustment layer. The same goes for other objects and furniture in the drawing. I feel like the original cut line wasn't thick enough, so I went over it with a thicker brush. And when this is done, you'll see it's actually going to make the plan more legible. You could do this with a straight line style, but I chose to hand dry it just to make it feel a little bit softer. In another tweak, I'm not totally happy with the color of the texture of the wood just yet, so I went back to that layer to adjust the hue and add an additional brush stroke to make it read with more depth. In one of the final steps in this illustration, I will move this paper texture from the top of the layer to the bottom behind both the pen and the color group. And I'm going to change all my color layers into a multiply blending mode so the color is organically blended into the paper texture. This is an important step if you want to make your drawing look less digital. Another thing I wasn't happy with were some of the annotation I wrote down earlier because it's causing some legibility issues. So I decided to move them out of the page. Of course, this text is on its own layer as well, so it's extremely easy if you want to turn it on or off. Lastly, I will perform a little bit of house cleaning and rename all my layers and make sure they are in their right group. I don't like to do this when I'm in a hurry. Often I will just add layers, knowing that I can merge them later on when I organize my files. This is going to help you locate something further down the line. Maybe a couple days from now, you're going to change something and having things correctly labeled is going to save you some time as opposed to fumbling through different layers looking for a line or a color. The beauty of showing a dynamic floor plan like this is that it allows you to communicate a greater amount of information about a floor plan layout, how someone might move around the space, how furniture are located, and the vibe of the space too. I think it's going to engage your clients on a different level instead of showing them the black and white line drawing of the space. But tell me if I'm wrong. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. So thanks for watching again. I am really happy to hear many of my tutorials are impacting your workflow, either in school or professionally. As I continue to provide more helpful content in the future, don't be shy about letting me know what more you would like to see uh, in the future. All right, I'll see you next time.